I firmly believe that card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, and Pokemon are meant to be played as games with other people, not used as investments like a stock market. Because there have been some pretty big developments on both the Yu-Gi-Oh side and the Magic the Gathering side, and it got me just wanting to talk about it, share my opinions, and also hear what other people have to say. So we'll start with the Yu-Gi-Oh side of things. We recently got the 2024 Dueling Mirrors tins, and these have been controversial for a number of reasons. They cost $22 for only three mega packs without promos, which is something that a lot of people like. The set sizes are really big, 400 cards, so it's really difficult to pull specific things that you want. And perhaps most importantly, the chase cards in this set are still secret rares, which are in many cases the same rarities that they were originally printed in, but also makes them hard to pull and still really expensive which sort of defeats the purpose of what a reprint set is meant to do. However, there are some opinions that I've read online that are saying, well, this is fine because it means that the people who got SP Little Knights before or Mercedes before don't lose the money that they made. They don't lose their investment. So it's good, in their eyes at least, that SP Little Knight still retains value. This is a premise that I wholly disagree with. I think that Yu-Gi-Oh! reprint sets are meant to make cards more accessible to players. As many people as possible should be able to get cards like SP Little Knight or like Imseti or like Triple Tactics Thrust because it makes the cards easier to play and that's what card games are meant to be. So traditionally in Yu-Gi-Oh! we've always had expensive staple cards. It's something that we're really used to. There's oftentimes a pot card, whether that's Pot of Duality, Pot of Desires, Pot of Prosperity, that costs $100 or even sometimes more, and you have to have it to play. There have been other staples that fit the bill too, like Triple Tactics Talent, Ash Blossom. There are plenty of them. You can go on forever. The thing is though, when there's a reprint set, I think that that should actually reprint the card in a way that more people can get it. Now, moving on from just the tens, a lot of people in Yu-Gi-Oh! actually want Konami to experiment with a mixed rarity system in general. A mixed rarity system basically means that within one set, you can get the same cards in different rarities. So imagine being able to get an SP Little Knight perhaps as just a super rare, but then also as a secret rare. And this offers you a choice. It means that you can get the much easier to get super rare version that might not look as nice, but is still functionally totally fine, functionally identical. And the high rarity version that's maybe more sparkly or maybe has an alternate art can cost $100 and it's fine because for people who want to splurge for that and have a card that's sort of a shiny flex, they can do it, good for them. But for everybody else, they can still play it. And this, I think, is the ideal way. We've actually seen Yu-Gi-Oh! do this before in the past. They've done it with Rarity Collections 1 and Rarity Collections 2, where you could get all the different cards in a set in seven different rarities. And these products were both really popular, especially Rarity Collection 1, because it was reprinting staple cards like Imperms, Called by the Grave, good extra deck cards, Ash Blossom, Triple Tactics, and you could get just the cheap supers or the cheap ultras, but also if you were willing to collect them, you could get the quarter century ones. It didn't matter though, because everybody was getting the cards. And this is actually something that they do in the OCG products. In Japan, with Yu-Gi-Oh products, chase cards are oftentimes just rares or supers, and then you can also pull them in higher rarity versions, and those are the ones with the price tag, but still, everybody is able to get them. Yu-Gi-Oh's actually done this in the TCG in the past before as well. There was a pretty long stretch of time during the GX era where cards were available as, say, a rare and also an ultimate rare in the same set. Cards like Brain Control, Lightning Vortex, Miracle Fusion, Karma Cut. These are just some of the very many times where this was printed like this way and it worked. Now let's take a quick detour over to Magic the Gathering. So Magic recently got a ban list update for the competitive commander format. It banned four cards, three of which are more important for the sake of this video. There's Doxide Extortionist, Jeweled Lotus, and Mana Crypt. And these cards were of course controversial bans because they were strong staples and they made certain decks viable. So some people took some issue with them being suddenly banned. But that's not really what's important. Lots of people have you know, disagreements with ban lists. That's nothing new. However, there are also a large contingent of people who are angry that these cards got banned because they lost the value of their investment in these cards. So what do I mean by that? Well, these were cards that cost $100 to even $200 for just the cheapest versions of these cards. 
And that meant that if somebody was, say, hoarding copies of them, maybe you had 10 or 20 and you intended to sell them or hold on to them and sort of, you know, play the market, right? Then suddenly these cards being banned means that their price plummets and people were really angry about this. Now, not everybody was angry. In fact, I've been happy to see a lot of pushback against this sentiment. A lot of people have been calling out the sort of card game investor or, you know, want to be vendor because these card games, like I said at the start, are meant to be played. So if you ask me, somebody who has 20 copies of these cards and they're just sort of hanging on to them, hoping that they'll accrue value and that they can then sell them to someone else, especially after maybe buying them for really cheap, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for that. So you can probably tell what these two stories have to do with each other. With Yu-Gi-Oh, there are people who want their investments to retain value, and also that seems to be the case in Magic the Gathering. However, I think that it's better that people should be able to get the cards that they need to play. So where do I draw the line personally then, right? Like, we know that there are people who just get lucky and pull one copy of SP Little Knight, and it's a casual player and they don't have any need for it, so they decide to sell it to somebody. Does that suddenly make them a villain? I don't think so. I think that I mostly draw the line with people who are trying to buy low, sell high, hoard, and make cards not available to others, and then get angry when those cards lose value from a sudden ban list or the announcement of a reprint. Because to me, cards just should be easy to get. I don't think that there's really any reason why a card should be able to cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and just be prohibitive from everybody else. Another caveat I'll point out is that I don't have a problem with rare exclusive versions of the same cards. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with a card having a starlight printing or an ultimate rare printing that costs one, two, three hundred dollars as long as there's a lower rarity, super affordable version of the card. The value would come from the card being hard to get, like being a prize or being something that you, you know, have to get really lucky to pull but it doesn't allow you to play something that other people are barred from entirely. And that's where I think games like Pokemon do it really, really well. I don't play Pokemon a lot, but I have built a couple of decks, and one of my favorite things about the Pokemon TCG is that it's really easy to get different rarity versions of the same cards. So I was building a Blastoise deck, and there are three different printings of the Blastoise that I wanted in a set, and one of them was two or three bucks, one of them was about $10, and then one was really hard to pull and it was like a rare alternate art and it was $50. I actually got lucky and pulled one of the $50 ones in one of my first packs. It was awesome and I like looked up how much it cost, I saw that it cost 50 bucks, I was like, oh God, now do I even wanna build this deck because I'll probably need like three or four copies of this. And then somebody told me, oh no, there's just like a cheap common Blastoise that you can get for like a dollar or two. And I was like, oh, and it does the same thing? And they're like, yeah. And I think that's a perfect system because it means that if I just want to build the deck, I can do that cheaply. And if I end up really liking the deck or I kind of want to flex, then I can spring for those more expensive versions later, but I don't have to have them just at the start. To me, it really is just common sense. People should be able to get the cards they want. So that way, when they're playing these games, they can focus on deck building and their gameplay, not their wallet and whether or not they can even afford to play at all. I know that trading card games are always going to have a secondary market and people will always prefer to buy singles. So we can't get rid of the idea of expensive cards entirely and I'm not proposing that we do. What I do think though is that, especially as it relates to Yu-Gi-Oh, companies should print cards in largely the same way that Pokemon does or the Yu-Gi-Oh OCG does, where you can just get the cards you need cheaply and play with them and then get rare, hard to pull versions if you care about that sort of thing. And I'll also repeat, I just don't have a lot of sympathy for people who keep these cards away from others at their local card shop scenes or try to cause buyouts online. But what do you guys think? Do you feel like trading card games should be treated as investments? Something where you know you can buy up a bunch of copies of a card when it's really cheap, and then when it gets popular and expensive, sell them off. Is that something that you do? I'm certainly open to hearing arguments why that might be a good thing. I just personally disagree with it. I've just been hearing so much about this magic bandless news and controversy around that, and then controversy around the tins, and I thought, well, I might as well say something about it. So yeah. Anyways, sound off down below in the comments, and without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Fast turn.